Joachim Trier's latest masterwork, The Worst Person in the World, is a film that I haven't been able to shake since first watching it, as I constantly find myself thinking back on this funny, melancholic, and charming film. It has a simple premise. The film follows four years in the life of a young woman named Julie, showing her navigating the treacherous waters of love and zeroing in on her search for meaning in life. Trier chooses to fragment Julie's story into 12 distinct chapters in which we see her relationships and path in life ebb and flow. Watching a woman completely struck with indecision in a constantly evolving modern world where nothing goes as planned. Her vocational goals and love life are continually shifting, and not a moment goes by without her battling what she wants her future to look like. This is essentially Trier's own distinct spin on the romantic comedy genre, subverting all the tropes we've all grown accustomed to seeing in this sometimes all too optimistic genre but in utterly unpretentious and invigorating ways. The film also acts as this poetic amalgamation of the various tones, themes, and ideas that Trier has explored throughout his career, specifically those from his debut feature, Reprise, and 2011 film, Oslo, August 31st, two films that the worst person in the world now rounds off to form a new found thematic trilogy, simply entitled The Oslo Trilogy. The worst person finds a way to effortlessly blend the youthful exuberance and novelistic structure found in Reprise with that of the raw vulnerability and aching restraint of Oslo August 31st, to create this film that is controlled and vulnerable when it needs to be, but also joyous and messy when it doesn't. Of course, these different ideas that Trier seeks to include in this story could, I believe, in the hands of less assured filmmakers, clash and lessen the overall authenticity of the project. However, in the hands of a master filmmaker like Joachim Trier and his brilliant writing partner Eskil Vogt, Everything works so seamlessly, and every frame bursts with energy and passion. While Trier and Vogt are most definitely the engineers behind most of this, the genius work of Renate Reinsva cannot be understated in this revelatory lead performance as Julie. It's a true star-making turn for Reinsva, who finds a way to be darkly comedic, to charm, and to break your heart all in one go. This is a very tricky role to play, as Julie is an incredibly elusive character who, like all of us, matures and also regresses as time progresses throughout the 12 chapters of the film. Yet, Reinsva balances all of these elements so gracefully, making for a deeply human character that audiences can connect with on a visceral level. Her chemistry with the incomparable Anders Danielson Lee is just the cherry on top. Because Julie's relationship with Danielson Lee's Axel is at the center of this film, if their dynamic doesn't work, then the film most definitely wouldn't work either. But I bought every second of their affection toward one another, and also felt their brewing frustrations toward one another as well, without the drama of it all ever feeling hokey or melodramatic. Their dynamic in this film is a perfect depiction of a relationship in which two people are trying to balance their love for one another without it getting in the way of their personal life and career goals. This relationship between Julie and Axel is incredibly multifaceted and constantly shifts throughout the film, particularly in the third act. Yet both of them remain truly grounded, and by the end, they will have crafted a dynamic that will ring true to many audience members and will undoubtedly move you. Plus, as Herbert Nordrum's character enters the mix, it makes for a trio that is truly messy and unpredictable, but authentic. The Worst Person in the World also has two of my favorite sequences of the year that almost can be viewed as fantastical set pieces of sorts when compared to the deeply humanist nature of the scenes surrounding them. These are highly stylized sequences that could easily take some viewers out of the film, but for me, they instead elegantly bring to life the character's feelings at a particular moment in time. They are truly awe-inspiring moments that I continue to look back on with joy, and just a couple moments that make this film a truly special experience that toys with the cinematic form in exciting ways. But I guess it shouldn't come as a surprise, as this film is, like everything else Joachim has made in the past, deeply truthful and committed to exploring its themes with nuance and empathy. From Reprise in Oslo, August 31st, to Thelma and the criminally underrated Louder Than Bombs, he always finds a way to move and capture an audience with these delicate, character-driven stories. His work means so much to me, and with five features now under his belt, he has further cemented himself, in my mind, why he's one of the finest contemporary storytellers we have today and he might have just made his best one yet with the worst person in the world.